Hi, I'm Vincent Florido, and I'm a GIS application support specialist at Blue Marble Geographics. And today we're going to look at how to create a terrain grid from a LiDAR point cloud. So in this workspace, we've got four different tiles of point cloud data from the USGS for uh, the area around uh, Bennington, Vermont, and it's got some good texture, some good topography, and it'll give us a chance to look a little bit at uh, how the different terrain creation options work. So if we open up the workspace and look at some of the data, you can see that um, there's these four different tiles. Click one on, on and off and you'll see it disappear and reappear. Um, we've got a fair amount of topography in the bottom left, the uh, southwest of the image, some fields and some roads uh, toward the northeast. So it gives us a good sense of you know, how the uh, grid creation options will work with different kinds of texture. Let's view it in the 3D viewer with height above ground as the coloration of the LiDAR points. And we can see that we've got this little mountain toward the west, and we've got some trees on it and some trees through the area around Bennington, Vermont. So let's go to the grid creation uh, tool, and we're going to check all of those layers. Um, and here we're going to start by creating a digital terrain model. So we go to binning minimum value DTM. I might name this layer digital terrain model rather than the automated uh, layer name just for uh, ease of use going back to it later. I happen to know that there's some noise in this data, so I'm going to filter out any LiDAR points below negative two meters above ground and any LiDAR points that are more than 20 meters above ground. That'll just filter out some random points that are very far off. And I know from looking at the density of the LiDAR cloud, um, roughly a good uh, grid spacing to use might be 0.75 meters. Now this no distance, uh, no data distance criteria can be sort of slid from tight to loose, and that kind of um, adjusts whether you know, you're going to hew closely to the existing data when there are gaps in data. There's no big no data gaps in this particular point cloud, so I don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, but if you had gaps in your data, you would want to use loose. So this is the digital terrain model that we've created. And as you can see, it's kind of a smooth representation of what the ground looks like. I'm going to turn off the LiDAR so that I can see just the grid in 3D Viewer. And if we zoom in, you can see that it's kind of this smooth representation of what the ground surface looks like when we strip away all of the earlier LiDAR returns that are on top. And there's a couple of spots where it doesn't do perfectly, but generally speaking, it's a smooth terrain model. Turn back on the LiDAR, turn off the terrain model, and we're going to go back in and do the same process all over again, selecting all of the layers, but this time we want the maximum value. So this is going to take the earliest LiDAR returns, and it's going to create a grid that represents the surface rather than the ground. We'll name the layer Digital Surface Model, and again, we'll filter those LiDAR points um, to remove the noise below negative 2 meters and above 20 meters. And that just kind of cleans up the data so that we don't have these pixels where there's a very high value or a very low value. Set the grid spacing as before, hit OK. And this time we can see that there's a lot more texture in the grid that we've created. Um, you know, toward the west, there's these trees on the mountain, and toward the east, you can see the smoother fields um, don't change too much between the digital terrain model and the digital surface model. But the forested areas really do change a lot when you choose binning minimum value versus binning maximum value. You can see the trees and they're very textured and dense toward the west there. Uh, so if you want to learn more about grid creation using LiDAR data, you can visit us at bluemarblegeo.com or you can reach out with any questions to geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com. Thanks for watching.